All right, guys, time to go to work. Who's ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Hey guys, it's 6.30 a.m. and I am here at my shop. Good morning guys. Welcome to Grand Style Pet Grooming. I am ready to get busy with my day. Come on inside and hang out with me while I get my chores done. Go on to the back. I'm gonna put their food in the microwave, get it warming up. While that's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and get started on some laundry. As usual, the mountain has grown. Never ending laundry around here. And these are gonna go straight into the clean run, so there's no sense in folding these. I would love to just fold them all straight as they come out of the dryer, but I can only do that either early in the morning or in the afternoon, but not midday because it's go, 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 go around here in the middle of the day, getting dogs groomed and getting them back to their pet parents. So all these additional chores, they're usually after hours chores grooming my own dogs, brushing my dog's teeth, you know, the feeding of my dogs, the cleaning of the salon, the cleaning of the rooms, the cleaning of the tub, the folding of the laundry, all those things. Paying the bills, cleaning the windows, chores to running a business. These I hang to dry. back up front and get the dog's food, get it to them, grab some more laundry from the front, come back and fold these towels.
let's go eat. It is time to give my dogs a bath and blow dry, and Ammo is going to get a haircut.
am using iGrum Prebiotic Shampoo and iGrum Extreme Volume Conditioner. Because he's getting a haircut, the Extreme Volume Conditioner is going to be real good for him. So this is just going to be a maintenance haircut. It's not going to be anything fancy. Just need to knock off some hair because he's getting too much. He's still growing his show coat out, but there's, you know, there's no sense in having an overabundance of hair in areas where we don't need the hair. As this part's growing, this part can be cut shorter. So you're just gonna watch me do just some of my routine maintenance and routine maintenance haircuts for my own dogs.
I am using Betoquinol Ear Cleansing Solution in his ears. Filling up each ear canal. Rubbing the base of his ear and letting him shake it out. Good belly. I'm gonna wrap them up in a nice warm towel. It's important to disinfect the tub after each dog, including my own. This is herbicide disinfectant. I'm going to let it sit in here for 10 minutes until I start the next dog.
have a fluffy boy. You look like a mushroom. Yes, you do. <laughs> His hair is growing, is it not? Let's get your hair tied out of your eyes. So the Monday morning videos are now um, featuring behind the scenes bits and pieces from the entire week, including things like this, washing my own dogs, and regular duties done behind the scenes for the week. I think that'll be fun. Hold you till your hair cut. It's very important when you wash and blow dry a dog with this much hair to sink your comb all the way to the skin and comb it up and out, up and out, up and out from the skin out over the entire body. Don't forget the ears and up under the ears. Twin, twin, twin up under the arms, the inside of the legs, all that. Make sure it's thoroughly combed, right? Right. And before I put him up, I'm gonna trim his face real quick. I know you don't like peppers. Come here. Mm -hmm. Stay.
Okay. Good then. Oh, you're all done. Oh, what, you think you get a cookie for that? You think you get a cookie for that? Is that what you think? Is that what you think? You think you deserve cookies? He says, yes, please. I deserve cookies. Yeah, I deserve two cookies. Huh, is it? Yeah, that's a good boy. Good boy. Get jackpots? There you go. Good boy. Off you go. Now it's baby's turn for a bath. I am using iGrum Prebiotic Shampoo and Conditioner for Baby. So I used a different conditioner for Ammo because he's getting a haircut. For her, this is a maintenance bath. The next haircut video I am doing with her is going to be a Desi trim. So the Desi trim requires full neck hair and some roundness in the body here and then tighter but big legs here and a pattern around the middle. So to prepare her for that next haircut, I've got to grow some fullness and a little bit more neck hair. So it's gonna take me probably till March, maybe April to have enough hair on her for that haircut. Then after that haircut, she'll be going into some of the other pattern trims but because the Desi trim requires such a definition with a point coming up into the back, the pointed area is going to need to grow out just a bit. To move on to the next haircut. 
And that's why this Poodle series is taking so long because each different phase, um, e each different haircut requires a phase of growth of the coat in order to execute the haircut properly. That's why it's difficult sometimes, especially with your poodles. If you find a cute picture that you really like of a haircut, you take it to the groomer and say, can I do this on her today? It's like, maybe in three months we'll work towards it. Because it takes that much hair to get all the right hair, or that much time to get all the right hair in all the right places.
Now I'm using Better Quinol Ear Cleansing Solution in the ears. Filling up each ear canal, rubbing the base of the ear, and allowing her to shake her head. This dries up any moisture that may have gotten into the ears and loosens up wax and debris. Wrap her up in a nice warm towel. And disinfect the tub with barbicide. Spraying any areas where the dogs actually touch. I do a more thorough cleaning of the tub at the end of the day. I'll let that sit for at least 10 minutes.
Let's get your ears all banded. Get you combed out. Get you a treat. And then you can go run around and talk to your sister. Yeah. Got to do your sister. Yeah, you do. Bands keep her ears out of her food and water and her mouth. Make sure no skin was caught in the bands. Comb from the skin out over the entire body. You notice I don't do this on regular brush out days when you see me just brush their teeth in a light brushing. I do this full comb out on bath days and I try to get them washed once a week. Basically, I only like to comb out the coat thoroughly if it's clean and conditioned. All right, you get a cookie. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You get two cookies. You get jackpot treats just like your brother did. Misha Pretty. That's a good girl. He's a good girl. Sit. Wait. 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 Yes, good girl. Off you go. All right, it's Gidget's turn for a bath. Stay right here. Cut the bands out of her hair. He's a good puppy. Let's get her to the tub.
¿no? So some of you may have noticed I'm not letting Gidget's coat get excessively long, but I am keeping it natural looking. Kind of like her messy looking little self. It's no sense for a 14 year old dog to have an excessively long coat. So basically when it gets so long she starts tripping on it, I just pull all this up this way, cut it here and let it fall back down. Just whenever I see it's out of control. I also shelled her out underneath and got rid of all the hair on the underside. Next, I'm using Vetoquinol Ear Cleansing Solution, filling up each ear canal, rubbing the base of the ears, and letting her shake her head. Take shake. Good girls. Good girls, get it. I know. Wrap her up in a nice warm towel. Spray the tub with barbicide. Head off to the drawing table.
and get our top knot put back up. Use the comb, make sure no skin was caught between the band and the top knot. I should have said between the band and the top of the head. I'm going to use my little top knot tool and tuck this top knot up under by sticking it through, putting the hair in the hole, and then pulling it backwards so that it tucks in nicely. Magic mist is on the other room, so I'm going to use some Artero mix. It's not my number one choice, but it'll do to reduce the static in our hair. And brush it back. And get it combed out. You want a cookie? You did very good. You do here. You did very good, Miss Gidget. Yeah. You did? You said pretty? Yes, good girl. So, I hope everybody's had a good week this week. We've had some great groom dogs. If you haven't checked out our YouTube, grooming videos, please check them out. We've had lots of fun dogs this week. Yorkies and Shih Tzus galore. A lot of tips and tricks thrown into the grooming videos. It's been an exciting couple of weeks around here lots going on. So busy. week we've got some great dogs for the videos um, a Maltese and an Asian fusion trim 
is coming in. We have Rolo the toy poodle. We will do a video on her. She's a puppy about six months old maybe. Coming up. Probably still five months old. Really, really cute dogs this coming week. Two Scottish Terriers, a Wheaton and a Brindle, getting clipper pet trims. Oh, and two tiny toy schnauzers, um, very tiny and very adorable. One is like a salt and pepper, black and silver, and the other one is, if I remember correctly, they haven't been here in about a year, they don't live locally, is like a silver with some like dark black eyelashes. And they do not get typical schnauzer haircuts. They get very, very short and tight on the body, fusion type heads, um, short, short, short scissored legs, and no skirt furnishings in the trunk of the body. Cute, cute, cute. I'm going to start working on a schnauzer hairstyles video. Now, pet groomers out there, don't hate on me because I know there is one correct haircut for a schnauzer. I got it. But as pet groomers, we don't always get um, clients that prefer that haircut. So, you know, as pet groomers, we have clients asking for all sorts of things and they're their dogs and they can choose to have whatever haircut they want on their dogs so this video is to show the options that are out there as food for thought for pet parents just options they're freestyle grooms Short beards, short mustaches, um, fusion styles, short blunt eyebrows, uh, standard, breed standard type trims that are clippered. And unfortunately, I don't have any clients who bring schnauzers and they get a teddy bear trim. But if somebody does, we will add that to the list. Oh, and a mega coat style. I will add that to the list. So that is in the works. Not sure how long it'll take to put it all together, but it's coming. I haven't started building any of the blogs on the Dog Grooming Tips and Tricks website yet, but we do still have blogs up at GroomingSafer.com, and our newer blogs will be just slightly different from our blogs on GroomingSafer.com. So much going on. It's exciting though. I love it. want to do a hairstyles options videos for uh, Havanese and Catans. We'll put them both in one video 
since basically they have a similar coat type and similar styles that are available to them. I've lost two customers in the last week and both were for the same reason and it's making me second guess my my standards but then it's not at the same time so tell me what you guys think and I know as a hairdresser as a human hairdresser and if any of you are or have been human hairdressers, give me your opinion on this as well. So say if it's a human salon, a nail salon or hair salon, and somebody comes in with a skin issue that is questionable, could be bacterial, could be fungal, who knows, right? We don't know, we're not doctors. Hairdressers aren't doctors. Nail technicians aren't doctors. And groomers are not veterinarians. So we can't test it. We can't do a skin scraping. We can't do a culture. You know, we don't know what we're looking at, what we're dealing with, right? All we know is we look at something and we're like, I'm not quite sure. Or if something's raw. So if it's like open, uh, eruption on the skin. So for me in my salon, and I know a lot of canine estheticians might have an issue with this. They like to treat it, but I prefer personally to know what I'm dealing with and only accept the dog once the skin is healed. Other groomers don't mind handling it. They're like, no, I'll do it, no problem. Yeah, I'll bring them on in, no big deal. Yeah, why wouldn't they do that? That's weird, kind of thing. So, um, when I, like I had a Yorkie come in the other day and her body was covered in crusts so that if you run your finger across it, it's just big, hard crust, 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 crust. Ugh. She gets a short haircut. I'm gonna have to run my clipper through the crust, which could leave it raw. Or when you wash it, the crust lifts off and leaves a raw looking spot. And so I don't know what that crust is. I don't know what that funk is. I'm not a vet, you know, I, and even if it's, just allergy, it can turn into a secondary bacterial fungal infection. So yes, you can disinfect behind it. Yes, we disinfect our blades. That's not the point. The point is I don't want a couple of things to happen. I don't want to cause the dog to become more infected. I don't want to drag the brush or the clipper through it, causing it to get raked or lifted or aggravated. I don't want it to wash off and look raw so that they say, oh, you clipper burned the dog. I don't want just the funky stuff in here. Like say with ringworm, if a dog comes in with ringworm, it, the hair that comes out of the follicle when you're blow drying can float up. It can land on top of something. Later, it can float back down, land on a dog and infect a dog. Did you know that? Can't. So, 
you know, and not only that, you know, while we can disinfect our blades, they're getting on our clothes. It can trap, you know, and it can get in my cuts. It can, I get cuts and scratches on my skin all the time. I really don't want some unknown funk, you know, getting in me. I don't want to use a high velocity dryer to blow up the dander so that I'm breathing it in and it's getting in my lungs. People be like, I'll wear a mask. No, I'm not going to wear a mask 12 hours a day so I can groom dogs. No. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, I prefer healthy dogs in my salon with healthy skin. And I understand that there are chronic issues that are very, very, very difficult to heal with. So I prefer to do those dogs on a good day, not on a bad day. So, you know, those that have chronic flare-ups, it's like, okay, he's flared up today, let's push him off. I'll come in early, I'll stay after work, I'll get him done as soon as he flares up. But no, customers don't appreciate my efforts and keeping this place clean and healthy and sterile to some degree. And I'm not a clean freak, trust me. I'm not a clean freak. Not with Mount Washmore over here, you know? But I think it's important to do this, but I'm losing clients over it because they're like, put my dog down. You say my dog has something on me. I'm going somewhere else. I, I just don't have time for this. It's like, I'm going to do that. But no, I don't want to lose clients, especially not over something silly like that. So tell me what you guys think. Do you think I'm going overboard? Do you think I, I am being silly? Do you think it's expecting too much do you think it's my job to handle nasty skin all right we're folded wait for the next loads to get done and then we'll fold that too all right so i'm going to take a few minutes and knock some of this hair off ammo this isn't intended to be a full haircut, but he's just got way too much hair and I've got to get a little bit of this off. Hopefully I'll have enough time to do a full haircut next week. Stay done. Stay, stay, stay. He scissors, scissors. Scissors to that much. Okay, you're all right.
So we were talking about skin issues and um, other issues where we may not want to accept a dog for grooming as professionals and whether that was the right choice or not. So, you know, I'm conflicted on that point right now and that's why I wanted to talk about it because I know that I could use medicated shampoos and I know that I could help the dog on that day. My problem with that is that it gives the pet parent false uh, ideas that because the groomer is doing something, they don't need to, right? So if, say if the dog has a yeast infection, you know, I can use like a chlorhexidine, myconazole type of shampoo, and I can use it on that dog on that day, and I can tell the client, yeah, we can do this treatment, and you know, I know what it is, and you know, I can use this product, and I can charge you $15, $20 extra, and then the client would be like, great, you can take care of my problem for me. I don't have to go to the bed. I don't need to do anything. It's all taken care of. But that's wrong because if you want to clear up something like that many times, you need to figure out the root cause. What is triggering this? Is it food allergies? Is it what? And then you need to eliminate the root cause. Sometimes I need internal medication. And if you're going to do shampoo therapy, many times it needs to be done every three days until it's resolved. Are you gonna be bringing your dog back to the groomer every three days? Probably not. So I think my point is, is giving people this false security. It's like brushing the dog's teeth. I have clients, how much extra do you charge to brush teeth? I say, I don't, I don't brush teeth. And they look at me shocked because that's an upsell, right? I don't wanna upsell it because I want to encourage my clients to brush their dog's teeth at home every day, or at least five times a week. And if you have the false security of the groomer doing it once a month, you know, or once every six weeks, you're like, ah, the groomer's doing it. I don't have to do it. And I'll never need my dog's teeth clean because I get the groomer to brush them every six weeks. It, it's, that's not how it works. <laughs> Even though I brush my dog's teeth five times a week, they still need a dental every six months, anesthesia free, and periodically under anesthesia, right? And there are all kinds of therapies that groomers offer um, to treat dogs for skin ailments. And that's been a big question mark I've had. Is it right or is it wrong to do that? I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying if we suspect a problem and we offer a solution, are we crossing the line into uh, veterinary territory by diagnosing the issue and offering treatment? I, even though it's on the outside of the dog, that's just my question. Is it, is it practicing medicine without a license? Because dermatology is a veterinary uh, specialty and but groomers are also you know estheticians are also you know able to handle skin 
my question is skin yes keeping it healthy yes keeping it beautiful yes treating it that's where i i kind of you know question myself You know, and the really good products that are available for um, shampoo therapy and such, they are usually labeled to only be used and sold by veterinarians, used by or under the direction of or sold by veterinarians. So if a client brings in a veterinary type product, I can use it but I can't buy it and use it on my own. And I think that's why so many uh, groomers who pride themselves on treating things find ways to do it through essential oils and that kind of thing to get around that point. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying, you know, That if, if you do say that you can help a problem, are you saying you know what the problem is? And if you're saying you know what the problem is, are you offering treatment? That, that's my, my question. And that's why I don't offer those things. So when I have a client's dog who comes in with an issue... What I do, if I think it may be contagious, or if I think I can cause more problems and do good by, by getting soapy water into something that is raw, um, then I refer it out to a veterinarian. Or let the pet parent do the shampoo therapy at home because it needs to be done like every three days. Now, am I willing to use that pet parent's shampoo in the salon that they bring? Yes. Am I um, willing to groom a dog that has chronic issues as long as their skin is not broken at that time? Yes. As long as I know what it is, that it's not contagious and you know, that it is under control. If it's not under control and it's chronic and the client's just like, yeah, you know, I, I've had clients who bring in dogs who, you know, for years go on with things out of control. And that's kind of why I lay down the law now because yeah, my vet says he just has allergies and it's swollen, red, oozy, scaly, um, neglected. Even on love dogs, neglected skin. And so it's at that point where, you know, I'm like, you know, we've got to lay down the law and it either needs to get treated or you need to go. And nine times out of 10, the client doesn't want to treat it and they do go and I'm nice about it you know I'm like you know I really can't groom her again until you know the skin is not oozy and red and swollen and they find somebody who will and that's sad to me but it is what it is and the client will say, but the vet said it's just allergies. It's just allergies. It's just allergies. And yeah, it's just allergies that aren't being maintained. You know what I mean?
So I've had dogs of my own who've had bad allergies. One was allergic to anything bird, chicken, duck, turkey. One's allergic to chicken that I have now. And then I had one that was allergic to lamb and to five different kinds of grasses. So, you know, I understand how hard it can be to maintain them. But once you understand what they're allergic to and you understand what to keep them away from and then you understand how to maintain it when you have an outbreak, you know, it's quite easy, honestly. But it's the pet owner's responsibility to figure out the problem, to prevent the problem, and to treat the problem. Now, pet parents can experiment with what works and the shampoos and the, you know, any homeopathic kind of treatments and all that. The pet parent can do that. The pet groomer, you know, has to be very, 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 very careful on crossing the line and diagnosing and treating. So, like, I can give my own dogs their own shots, everything but rabies. You know, that's not a problem, but I can't give client dogs shots. Right? Same thing. not saying one person's right or wrong for what they do at all. I'm just talking about how I process the information, how I think about it, and why I don't offer certain upsells. And why I prefer to not accept dogs, even though people think I'm a little over the top on it. Maybe I am. It is early, early in the morning, and I'm going to work on him till my first dog arrives. Not by any means going to finish this, but at least I'll have some hair off.
Ta 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 ta. Sometimes we have to get up extra early in the morning to get our own dogs done as groomers because <laughs> there's no time during the day. And tonight I can't do it because I got to go home and make their dog food. We usually make a month's worth at a time or at least three weeks worth. See how I make my dog food? We have a blog at groomingsafer.com. And then we also have a video on how I do it, how I make my own dog food. I must be doing something right with it because my dog's like a mess, if I don't say so myself. Ammo here is, I think he's eight years old now, seven or eight. 2016, it's 2024. He's almost eight. Getting to be a senior, buddy. A little senior citizens? Yeah. The senior citizens. He says, just hurry up, Mom. It's like you're always fussing with my hair. Uh 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 uh. Okay. I'm thinking about entering him in a veteran's class at a dog show this year since he's going to have show coat. He hasn't been in show coat since he was a year old. And I'm like, hmm. And there are dog shows that allow neutered dogs. He is neutered. So I'm like, that'll be fun. Huh. It'd be fun, huh, Ammo? Wanna go to a dog show? Strut your stuff? He says, sure, Mom. There he is, then. Hmm. See, where were you, Shane, Mom? Fluffy dog.
So it's kind of the same thing too with fleas. Those of you who've been watching me for a while remember a little poodle I was grooming who kept coming in with fleas. And, you know, I mentioned it to the pet parent, mentioned it, and the last time she came in, I said she had about eight fleas today, and he goes, oh, that's not bad, instead of doing something about it. So I refused to take the dog until, that looks terrible, until, that's nah, better, <laughs> um, he got rid of the fleas. So rather than getting rid of the fleas, he got a new groomer. And it's the same thing I'm talking about here. It's, to me, laying down the law will lose me the client, but sometimes it's worth the loss, I guess. You know, because, you know, if you watch me all the time, you see that I don't have fleas in my shop. My clients' dogs don't have fleas. I want well-maintained dogs in here. And a lot of groomers are like, but that's not right. You're not helping those poor dogs. And it's like, how am I supposed to help them if I get the fleas off and they go right back home and get more fleas? Because there's fleas all over their house and there's fleas all over their yard. And their pet parent thinks, you know me I see a free flea and I freak out and I'm sure many of you are the same way and you know the if I see one flea it's like I'm on high alert if I see a flea again I go into absolute damage control right so you know, eight fleas would be panic to me because I don't want fleas. So, you know, but then there's groomers who say, but, you know, that's terrible that you won't help that poor dog. That is just terrible. How dare you? You shouldn't even be a groomer. But I'm like, my thought process on it is, okay, yes, you're right that helping that poor dog in that time of need is important. But it's like, um, if you give a fish, you feed a person. If you teach somebody to fish, you feed a village kind of idea. It's like if you refuse service and make that pet owner wake up and tend to their needs of their dog, then you can help that dog long-term, not just for the moment, right? That's my thought process. But does it work? No, because they just go find somebody else who do it for them. So I don't know. That's my whole thing. It's like, am I really getting anywhere? But do I really want fleas in my shop? No. I still don't want fleas in my shop. So think of it this way. Should a hairdresser treat lice? Should a hairdresser treat ringworm? So if a client comes in and they have lice, is it the hairdresser's job to help that person get rid of their lice? Or... Do they say, oh, I'm sorry, you have lice. I cannot do you today. What I need you to do is go ahead and get that treated. And as soon as you get that treated, either at home or by your doctor, come on back and I'll cut your hair. Is that what a hairdresser would say? I think so. If you went in with something like a fungus, like ringworm, to a hairdresser, would the hairdresser take one look at your head and say, I'm sorry, I need you to go ahead and get that tended. And then as soon as it's tended and as soon as you're better, I'll be happy to cut your hair, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I understand the heart of pet groomers wanting to help, but you know, one thing I found is if you take dogs who have fleas, next time they're gonna say, oh, last time my dog was here, he got fleas. Why are they gonna say that? Because they know that you accept dogs with fleas. You've already set up that precedent. Or if you take a dog with a fungus, they're gonna say next time, oh, last time my dog was here, he got something in his skin from the groomer. You probably didn't disinfect your blades. You know, you probably took a dog with issues. So, you know, you're setting up these precedents. All right, I see my customer pulling up, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie up his top knot and get him put up and get ready to get started on my day. Say bye, Emu. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. It is dog food making day, so let's get busy making some dog food. If you're interested in my recipe or any of the products that I use to make the dog food that I make, uh, you can see the recipe at groomingsafer.com. You can also see uh, detailed instructions on my dog food making video. I am starting with grinding up the meat. So first I put it on chop and then I put it on puree to give me the right texture for the meat. Now let's take a second and get the liver cooking.
Remember, don't be tempted to put salt or seasoning in your dog's food, just like a baby's food. Because they are your babies. So when we buy our roast that we cook for this, it's really lean meat. Let's check on the liver.
So this usually makes three weeks of dog food for three dogs, three small dogs. I enjoy making my own. I know exactly what my dogs are getting. So I found the stages that I do this in very important. You notice I don't mix the rice with the meat and I don't uh, put anything else in with the meat because I want the meat to have this dry, uh, crumbly texture before I get started. And if I put too much gooey stuff in there, it's going to not mix appropriately. So normally I use brown rice. Today we're using white because we were out of brown. This is squash. So I actually found this recipe online for dog food recipe for dogs with sensitive stomachs because Gidget has chronic colitis and she does beautiful on this with no issues. So while well, some people are diehard raw feeding fans and everybody's got their own ideas in dog food, I've had my Carrie Blue Terrier had uh, was ill at the end of her life, and um, I needed something that wasn't going to upset her stomach. And then we got Gidget, and she has chronic stomach issues if she's not fed just so. So this works. So whether you agree or disagree with my dog food choices and making methods, 
this is what I do and it works. So next is the carrots. These are cooked with the meat as it's roasting. I've had clients try this dog food for, say, dogs with cancer who stop eating and get upset stomachs and so on, and it worked great for them. My poodles don't have any health problems whatsoever, but they do well on this. Their coats are great. Their weight is perfect. Now we're going to do the rice. Put the liver in there. And one can of the kidney beans. This is low sodium. Be sure you get low sodium. I know some people are against using peas and legumes, but I do. Gooey, gooey, rich and chewy.
So you might be tempted to put water in this to make it more fluid. I recommend against that because uh, when you go to mix up the dog food, it changes the whole consistency. And I like it not too wet um, so that when it's a finished product, it has a little bit of a dry texture to it. I don't want it sticky or gooey in the end. They eat it better if it's got some looseness to it. When it's at this stage, you might think it needs it, but it doesn't. I'll just get my hands dirty. I gotta do this with my hands anyway. So now I mix by hand. It's the fun part. Make sure everything's evenly mixed. pretty good. So now as you can see the texture is not wet, it's not dry, it's you know so if you would have added water to it it would have just been goo. So you really want it to kind of break up like this. It's easy to eat especially for my Yorkie who hardly has any teeth. All right. This is dog grooming after hours. <laughs>
Next, I'm going to get this all cleaned up and um, move on to sewing bandanas and bows. Once it's all mixed, we package it into daily servings for all three dogs. So one of these holds both breakfast and dinner for all three dogs, and that way we don't overfeed them. Now for the fun part, the cleanup. going to do it. I thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next upload. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye!